people it's Rob Lee I'm gonna do a video for you called killing Jesus again 2,000 years ago the only begotten son of the one true creator sat talking with the Roman governor Pontius Pilate Jesus knew that he was uh, about to be put to death and Pontius Pilate wanted to release Jesus they had a short but incredibly compelling conversation Pilate asked Jesus what is truth everybody in our modern world seems to be searching for the truth the majority of the world claim they want the truth, but these same truth seekers will reject the truth if it disrupts their life in the slightest. They will also reject truth if they cannot comprehend it. And this is magnifold tenfold for the majority of churchgoers. We live in a world of illusion and deceit. It starts from the time you are born and continues until the time that you take your last breath. And during this journey, only a very few are actually honored to learn a few truths about this world and some of the mysteries. Would the same monsters and their trained hounds of today kill Jesus the Christ if he were alive? How would the so-called truth seekers and those who claim they seek justice, equality, and freedom of speech, how would they do if they encountered truth in flesh? Well, let's look back and then we'll bring it up to the modern times. The kidnapping, trial, and murder of Jesus the Christ is a subject that is very rarely ever taught. In fact, not much about the truth of Jesus, the scriptures, or accurate history is taught any place. The reason being is that the money masters have control over the churches, academia, and society. The technology that we are using to communicate now is under the control of the serpent and his family. However, our Father in his infinite mercy will allow his children to have a platform if he chooses, and it's nothing the devils can do about it. But they are given substantial leash in which to try and harm and control us and this goes for our words as well this is why i've done so many videos about freedom of speech the battle for our speech the truth your words it has begun in matthew chapter 2 we find that king herod of jerusalem attempted to trick the wise men into revealing the location of the child jesus when the almighty father prevented it we find that herod was so angry that he murdered all the children that were in bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under in an attempt to kill the infant Jesus. This is the true nature and the extreme lengths that the devil's children will go to so that we may be destroyed. King Herod, you will remember, was the king of the Jews at the time of the birth of Jesus Christ. So let's get to the story of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was betrayed by someone pretending to care for him, a devil. Yes, Jesus called him a devil long before Judas betrayed him. He was betrayed to the Pharisees for a mere 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver was what we would call now a couple hundred dollars. And 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave in, in the Old Testament. This was mockery. On the day of the betrayal of Jesus Christ, we can logically conclude that Jesus arose early, as did all the people in that time. In those days, there were no late sleepers. By the time that Jesus had been betrayed, he'd probably been up for around 16 to 18 hours, and he was tired. He was also nervous and scared. Yes, Jesus the Christ was afraid. Jesus the Christ prayed to his Father for strength and went so far as to ask if he could avoid the hell that he was getting ready to face. Matthew 26, 38, Mark 14, 34, and Luke 22, 41. Jesus makes it emphatically clear that he chose his Father's will to be done. His Father's will. From the time of his birth until his death, our King was setting an example for us to follow. Our will does not come before the will of our Father. As children of the kingdom, we must always seek to do our Father's will. The pain that Jesus Christ endured was for you and I. Jesus the Christ chose to lay down his life. He had power to lay it down, and he had the power to take it back. John 10, 15 through 18. None of these wretched devils had the power to kill Jesus Christ. He allowed them to do so because of us. He was kidnapped. He was taken late at night in secret because the devils, these devils, they work in secret. He was taken at night because they did not want the people to know. Because remember, the people probably would have risen up and killed these monsters because they knew they wanted to make Jesus king. They understood this was the Messiah. He was beaten, spat on, and degraded. He was given a short and corrupt trial that would make even the most corrupt legal system look good. After spending the night going before the Jewish authorities, he was brought before the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. Now Pontius Pilate was afraid of Jesus, and he tried 
many times to set them free, but the Babylonians kept saying no. They said, let his blood be on us and our children. You don't have to worry, it is. Pontius Pilate even went so far as to try to have another man, Barabbas, crucified in the place of Jesus again, only to have the Babylonians say, no, we want Jesus to die. Pilate was scared. He knew something was wrong. In fact, Pilate was so afraid that, in my opinion, and this also bears out in, in Scripture, Pilate was probably at this point willing to do anything that he could, that he didn't want to be a part of this. Pilate would have just as soon walked away. Pilate knew something was wrong. Remember, Pontius Pilate's wife, the Scriptures recorded, had dreams about Jesus the Christ and told her husband to leave him be. Eventually, Pilate, out of fear, turned Jesus over to the Babylonians, but not before washing his hands, washing his hands of the blood of this innocent man. From the moment he was betrayed until his death, Jesus, was, Jesus Christ was physically and mentally abused. By the time they led him to his death, he had not slept for 30 plus hours and he was beaten and exhausted. He was beaten so profusely that the flesh was removed. Our king was so severely beaten and exhausted that he did not have the strength to carry the tree that was used to crucify him on. He needed help to carry it because he'd been beaten so much and he was so tired. He not slept in about a day and a half and he'd been cupped up all night. It's called sleep deprivation. It's a form of torture. He had five to seven inch spikes pounded into his wrists and ankles that were used to hold him up on a tree only to die by suffocation. No, Jesus the Christ did not die from his wounds. As horrific as they were, no, our king suffocated to death. I can hardly think of a worse, a worse fright and a worse pain to know that you are not able to breathe and you are going to slowly suffocate and die. Some wretched devils made a crown of thorns and planted them firmly upon his head in the shape of a crown to mock him even more. Everyone who followed Jesus the Christ was scared and helpless. Many followed from a distance and others left entirely for fear of being killed themselves. His closest friends have deserted him, except for just a very few, and most of them were women. Yes, the women seem to have had more courage than the men. They cry and wail as they try to give as much support as possible to our King, Jesus the Christ. While enduring his murder, his mother is there, Miriam, Mary, and she's there to watch him die. Imagine that, your own mother watching you be brutally murdered. She is witnessing her son be tortured to death right in front of her own eyes. As Jesus hung there on the cross, the tree, people were laughing and mocking him. They said, so here is the supposed son of the almighty God, but he cannot save himself. The Babylonians mocked and they laughed right up until the very end. But it was the Roman soldiers who felt pain, remorse, and pity, and they became afraid. You see, the Roman soldiers knew their spirit knew something's wrong. And it was a Roman soldier who spoke up and said, truly, this was the Son of God. He felt fear. The Babylonians, they didn't feel shit. They felt glee. They, they felt glad that he was dead. Jesus Christ bravely endured this pain, fright, and even doubt. He looked into the eyes of his mother. And even though he was in excruciating pain, he had to have noticed the pain of her watching him be tortured. Jesus is slowly starting to die now. He's losing his breath. Crucifixion is one of the worst forms of torture possible. For Jesus to breathe, he would have had to stand up on his spikes that were in his ankles. He was suffocating to death. This is why the soldiers would break the legs of the crucified people to speed up the death. But the father would not allow them to break the legs of his son. No, this was prophesied. No, it will not happen. Jesus was thirsty. And it probably took all that he had to ask for a drink of water. A soldier dipped a sponge in vinegar and attached, and attached it to a reed and put it to Jesus' mouth. The mockery continued right up until his final breath. The Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus spoke from the cross, the tree, and he asked his father to forgive those who, do not, who did not understand what they were doing and whom they were actually murdering. Jesus was referring, he was referring to the Roman soldiers and the Israelites who were under the spell of the Babylonian devils. And in no shape or form was he referring to the Pharisees. The Pharisees damn well knew exactly what they were doing as we seen when they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. Eventually, Jesus gave up his spirit and he died. The Babylonians, though, were not done. They were trying to pay guards to steal his body and lie about what had actually happened. You see, the Almighty Father put angels in his tomb because he knew these monsters would try to steal his body, just as they were going to do with Moses' body. It never changes. 
Now let's come back to today, our time. It's almost 2019. Would the world today and the same Babylonian devils kill Jesus or would he receive a pass? Let's say that truth became a man and took flesh form in our modern times. The truth in the form of a man went out among the people in 2019 and said, I'm going to share with you the truth. The truth. I'm going to show you how to save yourself. I'm going to teach you the real truth. The Babylonians would invite him on TV. They would put him on the shows. He would be on the internet. He would be, he would be internet sensation. He would be everywhere. How long do you think it would take before the same monsters who killed him the first time would convince their, their hound dogs, their hounds, you see, their, their followers to turn on the truth and kill him? There would be a massive propaganda campaign to destroy this truth. He would be labeled. He would be told. It would be said he's evil. He's anti-Semitic, even though he is the true Semite. He would be labeled all that is wrong with the world. Truth would be laughed. The truth would be laughed at, ridiculed, and it would not take long before the truth would be locked up or killed. The people of this world would go talk with friends about this person named Truth. After watching television, some YouTube videos, of course, and discussing on social media, listening to some music, eating some poison, drinking, doping, smoking, they would tell Truth to go to hell. I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, but I know you get my point. You see, because Truth did take the form of a man 2,000 years ago, and the Truth was kidnapped, locked up, mocked, spit on, beaten profusely, and murdered by being suffocated to death as the people cheered for truth to suffer. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. However, Jesus the Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is truth personified. And he will return to this world. And these monsters will have another chance to kill him. They will have another one. They, But they will swiftly be destroyed. Heads are going to roll and asses are going to burn. Blood up to the horse's bridle. And he will fatally strike those who have denied him. He will rule what's left with a rod of iron, and we will rule with him. This is your reward. This is why you will be kings and priests. This is why you will be rulers. You are going to co-rule with him. That's what the word Israel means. That's what it means. You're going to co-rule with your creator. Revelation 19, 14 through 19. So whenever you hear some jackass who claims they're seeking the truth, grin at them. They don't know the truth. And if they met the truth, they'd be talked into killing the truth. Jesus is the truth that opens up all other doors of truth. 